Welcome to Mental Millennials with your host, Shelby Friesen. Uh, welcome to another episode of Mental Millennials. Today I've got Andrew Taylor on. And I first heard about Andrew a year or two ago when I was doing a nutrition and detox course. And the lady instructing it, Nicolette, had told us how potatoes are these superfood and everybody thinks that you shouldn't eat them because they're a carb. And she went on to tell us how Andrew here ate potatoes for literally an entire year. Um, and like, I literally think about this every time I eat potatoes now. Like I always tell people about it every time. It's like, man, like, why do you eat so many potatoes? I'm like, dude, this guy literally ate potatoes for a year. Like they've got to be good for you. And there's other studies that I found where um, university students had ate potatoes for like 30 days and they would be healthier than when they ate their normal diets. So um, yeah, it was always kind of a kind of a goal to reach out and get you out on the podcast and get to hear the actual story from you. So um, I'll turn it over to you now to give a quick intro and then we can kind of go from there. Yeah, no worries. You mentioned Nicolette. Was that Nicolette Richer? Yeah, yeah, from the Green Box yeah, cool. Center. Yeah, cool. I, I like her. She's a I'm, a. I'm a fan of her. So there you go. We've got something <laughs> uh, a mutual friend in common there. That's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So basically. It's a, a sort of a long story, but uh, you know the the shortened version is that I dealt with weight problems all of my life, and uh, you know, like most people in that situation, I, my weight went up and went down, and you know, I was able to stick with the diet for a short period of time and lose weight, and then fall off the diet, put it all back on plus more, and um, and I realised at one point that the my behaviour patterns were very similar to that of an alcoholic that. Um, you know, we all, we've all probably known an alcoholic who has been really good at quitting alcohol for a couple of weeks or a couple of months or whatever. And then some sort of special occasion comes along where they go, oh, I'll just have one drink today. I'm okay. I've got this under control. I'll just have one drink and go back to being sober tomorrow. And sure enough, that one drink is, is the top of a slippery slope back into alcoholism. So, um, yeah, that was pretty much the way that I was with food. And, and I realized that one day that uh that yeah that that was a, a realization that came to me and i figured that if an alcoholic should quit alcohol and a heroin addict should quit heroin and a you know a gambling addict should quit gambling and etc cetera, etc cetera, then why maybe a food addict should quit food and mm -hmm. um obviously you can't quit food you know all these other things you can't quit but you can't quit food entirely so the next step was to try to get as close as possible to quitting food and and, uh, and I figured, you know, as close as possible would be to find out if there was one food that I could eat that would sustain me and keep me healthy and then, and then quit everything else. And that would be as close as I could get to the abstinence model that is accepted as a, as a way to deal with pretty much all other addictions. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, once I had that idea, then I set about researching to figure out, if, well, if I'm going to quit all foods and eat only one food, what, first of all, is that possible? <laughs> and if it is, then what food would I go with? So I did a lot of research over, you know, I've got a science degree. So, you know, I have a, a sort of an advantage over the general lay person as far as science goes. I used the, the scientific research skills that I have from my degree to then, um, yeah, figure out if this was possible. And you know, after a lot of research, uh, the obvious choice was potatoes. So I did it. <laughs> And I was I was as surprised as anyone, believe me. Though I didn't yeah. expect to be eating potatoes for a year when I came up with that idea, but here we are. <laughs> and and why did you decide on a on a year? Like, did that was that your goal from the start, or did that kind of like evolve as you started eating them, or when you found them? Like, were you you must have been concerned that a year might be a long time with only one food? Yeah, that was. I don't have a justification for a year. When <laughs> when I came up with the idea of quitting food, my I was sort of debating with myself about whether it should be, I should do it for two months or a hundred days. They were the two sort of numbers that I had. And um, because I'd read lots of stuff that, from other people, like about habit change and behavior change and, you know, all that sort of stuff. And it seemed like, you know, somewhere between two months and a hundred days would have been a good amount of time to do it, to change, you know, my relationship with food and all of that. And, um, and yeah, so that was what I was weighing up between. And then, all this research that I was doing and everything that I was, you know, trying to figure out if this was possible, just by coincidence, um, this was not planned at all, but by coincidence, I finished 
all my research and finally settled on that, yes, this could be done and, and it could be done with potatoes. Now the only decision left to make is that length of time. And when I got to that point about three or four days before January 1st. And so while I was deciding how long to go, it was in the back of my mind that January 1st is coming up. I should start on January 1st. And then if I'm starting on January 1st, like maybe I should just go for a whole year. Like, <laughs> I don't know, it, was, it was like, there's no, there was no justification for the year. It just, it just felt right. That's mm-hmm. like, you know, yeah, so, so, so you did start right on January 1st. It wasn't like a middle of the year thing. No, if it was a middle of the year thing, I would have just done two months or a hundred days or something mm-hmm. like that. I would have worked that out. But because it was January 1st, it just, there was something about it. There's no like real justification for that. It was just, it felt like a cool thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. Just push for the whole year. Yeah. Um, yeah so it was tough going, but uh, yeah, we got it done. <laughs> <laughs> and like, there's, you must have not planned any meals or anything out. Like, like the, you must have started super simple, like doing what, just eating baked and mashed potatoes, or was there certain ways that you found you had to cook them for uh, like nutrient value and stuff? No, pretty much what I ate was like nearly all of my meals were either baked or boiled or mashed potatoes. Uh, there's no particular way that that it is better or more nutritious than any other way. Uh, like yeah, potatoes have, have got what we need and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the main thing for me was trying to keep it simple and, you know, keep it boring on purpose. It wasn't about like, okay, let's have a year of trying to find all the most interesting, <laughs> wonderful, you know, incredible, new, you know, all these different describing words of, uh, of how to eat potatoes. You know, I didn't want to become a potato connoisseur. The whole idea was that I wanted to get as close as possible to quitting food, you know, and then so if I spent the year trying to find the most interesting ways to eat potatoes that would sort of defeat the purpose so mm-hmm. yeah you're kind of going things. the opposite of that yeah yeah exactly i did do some interesting things from time to time you know just to you know break things up a bit that sort of thing but it was definitely not the goal and yeah nearly all of my meals were just rotated between either baked or boiled or mashed potatoes yeah and and before this like when you were like in your food addiction what were you like what were you generally eating just must have been ton- lots of processed stuff or like what other diets did you try that kind of weren't working yeah. for you yeah yeah well I've, I've tried every diet that, that you can think of basically so yeah like all the typical stuff like weight watches and um you know the things where you count calories and count points and all that sort of stuff and you know i've tried the paleo stuff i tried low carb stuff uh, i've tried I, i've tried <laughs> Yeah, I'd also tried, uh, these days I eat a whole food plant-based diet, but I had tried that previously as well. And, you know, so it's not anything inherently bad. Well, yeah, you could argue that a lot of the diets <laughs> I tried were unhealthy diets, but, but the, I don't think the reason that I couldn't stick with them was the diet's fault in itself. It was more, you know, my mental approach to it. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, that's, I tried everything. And uh, and sorry, I've forgotten the second part of the question now. <laughs> I got a bit carried away with um i don't even remember either i was yeah. the diets and then oh what yeah just oh, what you were kind of eating yeah. at first yeah yeah that, I, that came back to me now so so yeah uh in the lead up though i was i was i was vegan i've been vegan for a long time before i started the potato um year um but yeah you know vegan is that just means you don't eat animal products it doesn't mean you're healthy like there's this stereotypical <laughs> thing of like you know the skinny vegan that is uh you know the vegan diet supposed to be healthy and all that and yeah uh, you might argue that vegan ice cream is better for you than than dairy ice cream that that's a, an argument that someone could make but in the end <laughs> the lesser the lesser of two evils is still evil you know <laughs> yeah so, so that was yeah I, I was eating vegan junk food diet and yeah maybe vegan junk food is better than non-vegan junk food but it's still that doesn't make it good and uh, and, it, and it wasn't good for me <laughs> yeah that's uh that's a point that i like to make a lot too well I, I read it in the china study also because the the stats of like vegan um health versus like isn't much different than the standard american diet um just for that reason it's like people will go vegan but they're not doing it for their own health they're doing it for animals so they still eat the same processed junk that's offered 
um, yeah. instead of like kind of a whole food diet or something like that. Yeah, yeah. There, there are certain components of animal foods that, that are particularly unhealthy that, you know, we don't need to go into specific details, but yeah, there's, I saw a study recently that, that um, compared um, like beyond burgers for health with, uh, with normal like beef mm -hmm. and uh, the beyond burgers turned out better, but, but like, yeah, again, like th that sort of stuff doesn't really interest me. It's like, yeah, the lesser of two evils is still evil. So let's yeah. just, <laughs> nothing wrong with, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with this. Let's just eat some beans, you know, <laughs> yeah. or, some potatoes or whatever, you know, the, and, and, uh, yeah, my focus is less on enjoying food these days and just more on enjoying my life. So mm -hmm. yeah, I don't need to go looking for all that uh, stimulation and emotional support and all that, that, that I used to look for in food. Mm -hmm. No, that's awesome. Yeah. That's a, that's a totally, it's a big shift to, to do that. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a massive change for me. That, that was, that was my relationship with food and that's, a lot of other people's too it's you know emotional eating is a, a big thing and mm -hmm. um yeah maybe mm -hmm. maybe we should focus on emotional living rather than emotional eating you know <laughs> if, you've got a, if you've got a if you've had a stressful day what can you do to relieve your stress what rather than what can you eat mm -hmm. okay no, that's sure. something i've never said before that was brand new for you off the top of my head emotional living i might i might have to develop that idea right emotional <laughs> Of emotional eating, <laughs> you have to do something with that now. Um, okay, well, to go back to the the one year, um, like how I, I'd be curious to hear about how that like how it started and evolved, and you went through the year. Like, what was that journey of the one year with potatoes like? Yeah, well, the first couple of weeks was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. That was <laughs> like the cravings were intense. Uh, the, the mental battle was just all consuming. Mm -hmm. um, it was very, very hard for me. Uh, and, and yeah, but I, I sort of, I just knew that it was, that it has to be possible. Um, and, you know, I was out of other options. There was mm -hmm. like, I just had to do it. It was, it was the most, it felt like the most important thing I'd ever done. Um, but also the hardest and yeah, I just needed to find a way through. So, um, and sorry, yeah. just just to what like what was your weight at when you started? Uh, it was one hundred and fifty two kilos, which is high high three thirties, like three thirty seven or something like that. Okay. Down. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like not not the most obese person ever, but pretty overweight. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that was that first couple of weeks was intense to say the least. And you know, there's there was sort of a, a, a point where um, I got to a point where it was like oh, I just can't face another potato. It was just I hate I hate the idea of potatoes. Thinking about potatoes made me like oh, like just yeah. <laughs> just couldn't. And um, yeah, and that lasted for a couple of days where I just hated just the thought of eating potatoes made me just feel sick and. And then uh, there was a couple of days of that. And then I, I woke up one morning and I was like, this is, it's no big deal. You know, <laughs> potatoes and, you know, it was like a big mindset shift. It was like, you know, it's just, it's just fuel. It was suddenly it was just fuel and it was mm -hmm. like no big deal. And, um, and then I, you know, from that point on, it wasn't without its challenges, but it was much, much easier from, two weeks until the end of the year it was just yeah it was, mm -hmm. it was it was a different it was a different game from two weeks on yeah and, uh, i'd say also the you know my what we talked about earlier my decision about how long to do it all for uh yeah when i got to the two month mark i remember thinking yeah that now like everything that i wanted to achieve out of this year was done by two months mm -hmm. and um and then from then on, it was like, I, I've, I'm just, I just kept on going because I said I would. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. directly someone who completed things that I started. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's really what it was about from two months onwards. And um, so yeah. even like, was there a weight number that you <laughs> wanted to lose in the overall year and, and you hit that after two months? 
No, no, it wasn't oh, okay. about weight loss for me. I, I never oh, had really? a weight loss goal. No, I didn't. I on purpose didn't set a weight loss goal because every other diet that I'd ever tried, it was all about weight loss. Everything was about weight loss. And that was, um, you know, it, it had never worked. I'd always lost weight and then put it all back on. And so this was a really, a, a really on purpose, wanted to do this very differently to what I'd done before. And it was 100% of the focus was on, I just need to quit other foods and, Mm-hmm. you know deal with the addiction side of things and change the way i think about and relate to food and you know get that side of things right and if I, I figured that if i got that right then one way or another my weight would you know go where it goes and do what it does and, mm-hmm. uh, and I, I just had to let go of the weight number so i had no weight loss goal uh, i did expect that i would lose some weight doing only potatoes but i didn't i had no idea that i would lose that much i just I figured that I would focus on my relationship with food, probably drop a little bit of weight. And then at the end of the year, then I could, you know, change my diet further and see where the weight goes after that. But Mm -hmm. yeah, all the the weight that I needed to lose was gone in that year. And, uh, and it sort of just happened as a, as a byproduct and I'm glad it happened. And I, (laughs) you know, I'm, uh, it's a good thing, but it wasn't the goal. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So what were you at at the end of the year then? Uh, 95 kilos was where I finished the, actually, no, what did I, I think I got like, what was, I think it was like at the end of the year, I was 97 kilos. And then in, in the next month after that, I, I lost another two kilos. Yeah. Oh, so pretty- was like, yeah. 97 at the end of the year, then 95 at the end of January. And that was the last time I weighed myself. I, don't, I haven't, I don't weigh myself anymore. It's just, Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's where I sit. Yeah, so oh, that's so that's like a hundred. So I keep forgetting that you're in pounds. So that's like I lost like a hundred, uh, hundred and twenty-two pounds, I think it was. Mm-hmm. So that's what's that? So it got me down to like two twenty something, low two twenties. I'm a big guy, so that's yeah. You know, that sounds, that sounds heavy, but you know, I'm I'm nearly six foot six, so yeah, and, and solid kind of build i'm not like a skinny tall guy <laughs> so you know yeah <laughs> oh that's awesome um yeah it's it feels pretty good and uh yeah it's it's definitely better than the situation before you know i can mm-hmm. chase my kids around and i and i can get on the floor and wrestle with them and, it, and it's no trouble getting back up you know <laughs> mm-hmm. i can uh, i can play on the play equipment with them at the playground and yeah, there's all sorts of good stuff. I, I, just, I just had a memory of actually there was a, when I was doing this year, my older boy who's seven now, he was two at the time and I took him to a playground and there was um, a big climbing thing where there's like sort of, you know, netting and stuff. And he went climbing up and he wanted me to climb up with him. And I looked up and I'm like, oh, that, that looks like fun, but there's no way I can fit through all the gaps that you got to get through. Yeah. Like it's too narrow. This is a kid's thing and I, I'm just going to get stuck. And he was really insistent. He wanted me to come up and I'm like, oh, I'll give it a try. I'll see what happens. And, and it was easy. I just went through everything. It was no, no problem because <laughs> I'd lost all that weight, but my mind still, you know, hadn't caught up with where my, my size of my body. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I just, I just climbed up it and I fit through all the gaps and it was, and I was like, Oh, this is weird. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I didn't expect that I could actually fit, but yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And yeah. and like with your family and friends and and stuff, like what did they think when you were doing it or like like during it? Oh, yeah. Well, my my my, my wife was really very supportive and yeah, no problem there. We I just she just ate what she ate and I ate potatoes. And, <laughs> She ate some of my potatoes and yeah, no, no big deal. She just, she was just really supportive and everything was good. And, and yeah, same with my friends, really. I, I just, you know, I, they, they made fun of me like friends do. They wouldn't be good <laughs> friends if they didn't make fun of me. But, but you yeah. know, at the same time, they were, they were very supportive. And if I went to people's houses for dinner, they always made potatoes for me. Or if we went out to a restaurant, they made sure that there was potatoes at the restaurant before they booked. And yeah, it, it was fine. Um, you know, I think, uh, part of that was because I was really open and honest about what I was doing and mm. why I'm doing it. So, you know, people don't, if, if people just thought it was some sort of, you know, silly weight loss gimmick, then, and, you know, and not like a serious thing that I was doing, as I've explained that, you know, maybe it would have been different then, mm-hmm. you know, there would have been less accepting of it and more, 
you know, just making fun of it and thinking I'm ridiculous and that sort of thing. But because I was open and honest with them and told them exactly why I'm doing what I'm doing and how important it is to me, then yeah, they were happy to just let me do what I do. And, and uh, yeah, it was, it was not really an issue. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's a good, it's an easy thing at restaurants too. Like I even do it um, as like a go-to uh, just because it's so easy like at any restaurant you can always get potatoes like if you don't feel like eating something um, yeah. necessarily bad it's like okay i'll just get a bunch of sides of potatoes or mashed potatoes or whatever it is that they have um, yeah yeah and if you call ahead like pretty much every restaurant has potatoes in the menu somewhere in some dish mm -hmm. so there's potatoes in the kitchen and you can just call ahead and say hey can you just microwave a potato for me or a couple of potatoes and the <laughs> yeah easy, you know it's easy money for a restaurant so they're not going to complain yeah <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. and then after you finished the year like now what did you like do you you must still use potatoes as a staple yeah, yeah i've just had mashed potatoes for breakfast just before we started recording this so <laughs> yeah yeah I, I eat a lot of potatoes uh obviously not only potatoes anymore that was a one-year thing but I do still eat a lot of potatoes, like mo not all, but most meals have potatoes as a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's a, it's a, definitely a staple and, and yeah, it's a, it's a go-to for me. There's always cooked potatoes in the fridge ready to eat. So, you know, <laughs> don't have to wait an hour for them to bake or whatever. They're just, they're cooked and in the fridge and ready for me to heat up and eat and, or just grab and eat cold. And uh, yeah, they're, they're definitely an important part of my diet. <laughs> and what else do you eat now too like you you mentioned you went to a whole food diet like plant-based yeah yeah so it's all just unprocessed whole plant food so yeah i eat like i said a lot of potatoes a lot of sweet potatoes a lot of bananas other fruits like i, I, I like dates and berries and all that sort of stuff and i eat you know, greens like broccoli spinach those sorts of things i, I eat a lot of brown rice and beans I like, um, and my favorite meal is actually, I get uh, a baked potato with some uh, steamed broccoli and some baked beans on it. That's my favorite meal. <laughs> can of baked beans. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. I, I eat, yeah, not a not hundred percent unprocessed. So I do have like some ketchup or barbecue sauce or things like that mm -hmm. sometimes. But, you know, apart from that sort of stuff, it's all a hundred percent unprocessed whole plant foods and, um, yeah, just keep, I keep it simple. That's my main thing. I just keep it really simple and, uh, and basic and, and focus on living my life rather than, you know, trying mm -hmm. to live my life through food. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. I like that. Um, and then I did check out your website and like, are you offering programs for people? Um, like, like, what are you doing with that stuff? Um, yeah, well, that was something that's, you know, I never expected that I would end up teaching other people how to do this mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like but yeah I, you know my story went viral sort of by accident and uh and because of that i got a lot of emails from people over that year of people that you know my how, story. how were you sharing it at that point well that, that was a weird story in itself so when it all started when i started i i was just going to do it on my own and i wasn't going to tell anybody about it and um and my wife suggested I should keep a journal of my experience and um, you know so that I, so that at the end of the year I would have something to look back on and see where I've come from mm -hmm. and I thought that was a good idea but I also thought well I've tried journaling before and I, I sucked at it I'd be able, I'd like I'd do it for a week and then let it go and yeah. you know but uh, you know maybe this challenge of eating only potatoes is hard enough without adding journaling into it I just mm -hmm. didn't want to make it harder than it needed to be and she said, oh, well, okay, what about if you just um, do a video journal and just at the end of each day, just get your phone out, talk to it for a couple of minutes and be done with it. Mm -hmm. I thought, yeah, that sounds easy. I can do that. <laughs> but the problem then is where do I store the videos? What, what do I do with the videos? And she said, I'll just put them on YouTube and then store them there. And I was like, oh, I don't really want to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not <laughs> yeah. with that. I don't want people to be watching me on YouTube. And she go, and she's like, no, don't be silly. No one's going to watch it. It's boring. It's just a bloke eating potatoes. No one's going to watch that. <laughs> and I said, oh yeah, good point. Fair enough. <laughs> I'll put it on YouTube. So, so uh, yeah, we did that. And and through January, I had maybe fifty total views, and I wasn't I wasn't 
you know, promoting it or sharing it or anything. It was literally just a place to store my videos. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point I was, I was a YouTube novice and I didn't know that you could make the videos private. Oh, really? <laughs> so just, yeah. <laughs> so, but then at the end of January, somehow a journalist found my videos and wrote a story about it. And then it just blew up. Like it was nuts. Overnight uh, I was, yeah, this journalist called me out of the blue. I did an interview on a Sunday afternoon and I just thought that's pretty weird that someone wanted to talk to me about it. And, um, <laughs> And I just, I just thought, oh, that's, that's pretty funny. And, and then I went to bed that night. The article was published at night time, our time. And then I woke up in the morning and there was 500 emails. And, and oh like it just blew up. And then, I, yeah, it was crazy all around the world. And the next two weeks of my life, I hardly slept because I was doing interviews with all parts of the world. And, yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> so from that, um, from that, I got a lot of emails from people that wanted help. and. I liked helping people, but uh, I just didn't have time. And I, I said to my wife, like, I get the same questions every day and I, I want to help people, but I don't like, you know, I need time to live my life as well because there's just too many emails coming in. And my wife, again, she's like full of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> if you're getting the same questions, why don't you just answer all the same questions, write down all the answers, put it in a little ebook, and then people can buy the ebook and the questions will all be answered and you won't have to answer emails anymore. And I was like, yeah, okay, that's a good idea. So I wrote this little ebook <laughs> and, um, and, and then, you know, I, I released that for sale thinking that people would just buy that and then leave me alone. But all that did was increase the number of emails I got. <laughs> so then it, it went from there to, um, okay, maybe I need to get to a bit more detail. It's a bit hard to explain it all in a book. But people um, were buying the book. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. Still, people still buying the book. Yeah, it's still okay, there. Nice. Same book. I've got two books, but the original book is, yeah, it still still sells. It doesn't. The number of sales of it is pretty consistent month after month. Mm -hmm. um, and and yeah, so then I thought, oh, maybe I'll make a an online video course as well, and just go into more depth in all of my ideas. And and so yeah, I did that, and um and yeah, and then from there, people wanted to okay that we love the course but you know this is how to eat potatoes only and all the mindset changes and everything it's very in-depth and you know very much rooted in um addiction but then people wanted to know what to eat afterwards i was like okay so i made another course so it's like, <laughs> this is what you do next and yeah so it's sort of been an evolution and uh and yeah i love it it's cool <laughs> it's never yeah, that, never that, that, something i ever imagined that i'd be doing and it sort of yeah, it happened by itself, really. I never planned it, but it just, that's how life's weird, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's funny how it'll, it can evolve like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so is this like a full-time job now? Is like that what you do or do you still work another job? No, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I, I was uh, a teacher, mm -hmm. um, which I occasionally do a little bit of teaching work, but nothing, it's not full-time. Uh, especially now with the COVID-19 thing going on. I haven't ta taught at all this year because school hasn't been happening. So mm -hmm. uh, um, actually not at all. I think I did like one day at the beginning of the year and then that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so yeah, no, this is, this is what I do full time. And I'm also, uh, I've, six weeks ago, I started back at, at university. So I'm, I'm a full time spud fit guy plus a full time student now. <laughs> what are you going for this time? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm, working on trying to become a medical doctor. Um, oh, really? Yeah, so that's that's a long way off at the moment, but yeah, I've made a start and uh, and so far so good after six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, that'll, it'll be, that'd be a cool thing to be able to integrate with everything else you already have. Yeah, yeah, you know, the dream would be to have our own clinic and, uh, and you know, help people with food related stuff and uh, yeah, you know, Mm -hmm. yeah integrate it, integrate it for, with uh with medicine as well and yeah yeah no, there's a lot awesome. of water going to the bridge yet maybe i won't get the degree we'll see <laughs> it might evolve into something even crazier than you've already done who knows i'm not going to put limits on anything <laughs> yeah oh that's cool um and, and what books do you have like i have the cookbook but what do you have outside of that yeah so that's the cookbook is the second one we did okay because it's Sorry, is it still quite informative? Like there's a lot of, um, yeah, 
information in it as well as just recipes. Yeah, yeah, that was a conscious choice because as you've heard from talking, like my my life is not about recipes. Like, you know, it's good it's good to have options for delicious food to eat. But there, a lot of the recipes in the book, there, there are some very interesting, very exciting, you know, recipes that I would cook when I'm having guests around and stuff. And I don't want to just feed them a plain boiled potato, <laughs> those sorts of things. And, you know, every now and then you want to, you want something a bit more interesting and that's great. But uh, it's also, there's a lot of information in that book about, you know, sometimes it's just don't worry about the recipes and just mm-hmm. you know, focus on your life. So that's, that's the the book that you you've got but we've also still got the first ebook that i talked about and that's really just a pretty small one that's like 50 pages half of it is my philosophy on food and you know how to do it's called the diy spud fit challenge so it takes you through step by step of how to do it answers all your questions about you know just every question i could think of i answered in that book and um and then yeah just a, it's a guidebook really and um and yeah that's people love that one and and so that's i think it's about 50 pages from memory and half of it is the first half is that all that theory stuff and then the second half is a few recipes um yeah pretty basic simple potato (laughs) recipes and what and what do you charge for that book uh the ebook is on my website for just pay what you can Um, oh okay yeah and then and you can get a the the hardcover book i think it's like twelve dollars not hardcover like paper book it's not yeah. it's not a hardcover but yeah paperback book i think it's 12 dollars australian plus shipping it's okay. on amazon as well you know if people prefer amazon you can get it there um yeah and then yeah the, the cookbook that you're talking about that's that's on my website as well i think that's mm-hmm. four five australian um or again pay what you can if you get the ebook version mm-hmm. um, and that, they're both on amazon so yeah or, or other bookshops as well. They're, they're on all like heaps of different online, you know, the big uh, booksellers online, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then what about your courses, like the video courses? Yeah, they're, they're uh, we've changed the price recently, but I think it's 45 Australian, or maybe 47 Australian dollars. Um, and yeah, but we've changed it recently because it, it was operating as a membership. So you just pay like, a little bit every month and you just keep on going month to month to month but mm. we decided to get rid of that and just just you pay once and you've got it forever and you know yeah, a yeah. Lot of food ideas just simplify everything just you know we don't need it to be complicated just just do it once and you, and you can just have the course forever rather than doing a, a recurring monthly payment which mm-hmm. uh, you know complicates things and we got tired of the complication <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah it's definitely i mean it's kind of like a good business model, but it's also nice to just sell it and forget about it and not have to deal with all the recurring payments. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, reducing the admin for ourselves and our customers and, you know, it frees up a lot of time to then be creative and, and, uh, and be more helpful because I'm not putting time into the admin. And yeah, I think it's just, it's good all around that way. You know. Mm-hmm. And you've got two of those video courses. Yeah, so one's the the Spud Fit Challenge sort of thing takes you through that. It's twenty six videos, and it um it's a, just a real guide thing about I, I I call it my own name for it is my online food addiction rehab clinic, <laughs> um, but you know to the public it's the Spud Fit Challenge because that's what people know of me and um and then yeah the second one is I always say about the Spud Fit Challenge the most important thing about the Spud Fit Challenge is what you eat when it's over. And so that goes on to the next course, which is, uh, we call it the mega foods plan. And, and that's like a focus on, um, you know, there's, there's so much focus on superfoods. You know, everyone's like wanting to optimize the diet, get, the, get what food has the most protein, what has the most vitamin C, what has the most, you know, everything else. So everyone's optimized, get the most out of everything in it. And it's like, you know, if you focus on superfoods, then you sort of take the focus away a little bit from the most important thing. Like the superfoods, I look at that as like, you know, you can, you can have your, your uh, kale and broccoli and all that, and that's great. And that's sort of like bolting a turbocharger onto your engine. Right. But Mm -hmm. if if you're not focused on making sure the engine's firing on all cylinders and, you know, running really well before you put the turbocharger on, then, you know, there's no, not much point. So, you know, Mm -hmm. the engine itself, the, the real platform that you build uh, your, your health on is the mega foods, your potatoes, your rice, your beans, your oats, you know, 
mm -hmm. the, lots of things. And so that's your V8. And then you can put the turbo on top with your kale and broccoli and all that sort of stuff as well. Um, so yeah, that's sort of the, the, the basic idea of the whole thing. And of course, uh, it's like, there's a few weeks worth of videos every day that guide you through that whole process. So yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Um, sweet. Yeah, I'll have to take a look at those and check them out. Um, yeah, no worries. And then, so do you do any coaching and stuff too? Like, have you evolved that? Yeah, or, or yeah. You... Okay. Yeah, I do, I do individual coaching. Um, so yeah, that's yeah, one-on-one -on -one coaching that uh, that I, I work, what have I got? I think I've got ten clients at the moment. You know, my life's pretty busy, so I don't I don't make a lot of space for that. But yeah, there are there is a you know a small number of people that I do, and if anyone's interested in that, then you can email me and, uh, and we can work out a time to have a mm -hmm. chat and, and, uh, yeah, uh, I can't guarantee that I can fit everyone <laughs> in because, you know, I've, I've got a lot on, on my plate at the moment, but yeah, about 10 is the, is the number that I work with. And, um, and yeah, it's, that's my favorite part of it actually. Just, it's nice making all the courses and the books, but that's sort of doing it that way. You, I get a lot of emails and messages from people that are, that have had a lot of great success from following, what I've taught in my courses and books uh, and that's great but it's also you know I love that I love it but it's also there's a level of detachment when it's just coming in an email form whereas when I'm talking to someone we're interacting just like you and me are now there's a bigger level of connection and you know I feel more invested that way and you know we, we mm -hmm. sort of I get it feels like I'm sharing in their success a little bit more that way so that's that's my favorite bit of of everything yeah yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's definitely nicer to do that and get to get to have some of those clients. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. Hear their stories and see how they're transforming and stuff with it all. Yeah, I'll get to go along for the ride. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so in the so like in the future here, like where do you see it all like going? Like, is there anything you're working on next or any future plans that you? Yeah, I've got a. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm I've got plans to do a, well, I've got plans for several books, but my, my goal is that once I get through this semester of university, then I can get back to doing uh, a mega foods book to mm -hmm. go with the mega foods plan. So that's like a, a more short term thing is you get that mega foods book done and, and longer term is I'd like to, yeah, hopefully finish university and become a doctor and, you know, have a, have, open my own spud fit, clinic you know and mm -hmm. <laughs> try to work with people on on that sort of you know on a, on a deeper medical sort of level and yeah mm -hmm. let's see if we can really start kicking holes in uh in the problems that we have with nutrition so yeah yeah that's awesome i love that um and, and with the books like how long does it normally take you to write those like for the new one you're coming out like well do you use like a, a book writing place or do you just do it yourself no, I do it. I do it myself, uh, and yeah, we design all the books that we've done. Uh, the book that you've got, the cookbook, we we had a designer like do the the actual design and layout and all of that of the book. But mm -hmm. we did all the writing and we did all the photography and all of that ourselves. And um, yeah, and and the, and the first book that we did, the smaller one, that was a hundred percent us. And I think we'll do it a hundred percent us again for the next one. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of work, but it, yeah, it's, it feels good to do it all yourself and be able to hold it and say, yeah, I did this and yeah. And, and it's a lot of work. Um, the writing is in a sense, the easy bit, like the words, are, you know, I, I, I know what I'm, I know what I'm talking about and I know how I want to say things and this has developed over a long period of time and it's just a matter of finding time to just type it out basically. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so it might be it might be a, a month, six weeks of writing, of like doing a few hours each day, and and that'll be done, and then then the real work starts of putting it together, and that's yeah. you know I, I guess that we've got a I think it's a twelve week break over summer where between the end of second semester of university and the start of first semester next year, so hopefully we'll get it all done during that break. <laughs> yeah, that'd be perfect little chunk. Well, keep, yeah. is your, I didn't even realize you were in Australia. Um, your, your summer is yeah. going to be backwards than ours. Like you'll have summer in, yeah. in our winter. So you'll be working on it like yeah. this. 
yeah yeah so we're in we're just uh a couple of weeks into spring now and i guess you're a couple of weeks into autumn so yeah yeah summer over christmas here it's good a hot christmas <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a big change for me at least it would be yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. it's uh we yeah, still have all those all those weird christmas carols where you're drinking of uh, where you're thinking of a white christmas or you're dreaming of whatever you know that mm -hmm. <laughs> this is like that's weird it was weird i always thought that was weird growing up singing those songs about snow at christmas time i was like <laughs> <doesn't make> <laughs> <laughs> that would be weird you need some beach versions yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> oh that's awesome well i don't know is there anything more that Anything else that's on your mind or anything you want to share or feel like you missed? I don't know. I don't no, know if I've got any more I questions. We, I think we, I think we covered it, mate. I think it's good. I guess the, the one thing I would like, if people are listening, I would just want people to understand that, that, uh, you know, it's not about potatoes. It's about <laughs> doing you know, internal work and changing the way that you feel about food and think about food. And, and I don't, you know, you don't have to do the potatoes to lose weight, but you know, if you want to, if you want to lose weight and keep it off, uh, you know, you don't, you can't just focus on the weight. In my opinion, it has to be about changing the way you think about food and changing the way you relate to food. And if you, you know, it has to be, you have to work on, um, on making healthy eating rather than just something that you're doing for a moment to try to lose some weight. It's got to become a part of who you are. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really, uh, uh, if anyone out there is struggling, then I would say, yeah, you, you've got, everything that you need for success is, is within you. And it's, and it's just waiting to find a way to come out. And, you know, that's your job. It's not about losing weight. It's about, yeah, becoming a person who that's just, that's the way you live your life rather than just a, a little thing that you're doing for, for the moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, great advice. And I think I'm going to too, I'll send out your little, a link to your, ebook from your site to my email list too and i'll let them check that out and awesome. write, a, write a little blurb about the podcast here so yeah sounds good thank you yeah so yeah and thanks for coming on and making time uh, to do this I, yeah like i literally had no idea you were in australia too which i mean doesn't really matter i guess but the time change and making it fit in and everything so yeah uh, yeah, it's was awesome. It was, it was fine. Timing was fine for me. We just finished breakfast and we get into it. So yeah, no worries. And, uh, and yeah, thank you for for doing what you do. Thanks for having me on. And uh, lots of great questions. And you know, even made me think a little bit differently about things. So um, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna speculate on that idea of emotional living that you brought out of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I'll I'll keep watching and see if I see that come to life in anything. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, thanks again, and uh, we'll be in touch. No worries. Uh, all the best and spot up. Yeah.